Hello, Omar. My name's Ben. Do you mind if I examine you? No. Can I ask you to stand up to begin with, please? Please, could you take some steps towards me, turn around and walk back? Observe the gate looking for symmetry and smoothness. Now, could you just lift up your shorts for me? From the front, look to see if the stance, shoulders and pelvis are straight. Is there deformity of the hip, knee, ankle or foot or any muscle wasting? Assess the straightness of the spine and the bulk of the gluteal muscles. Note any scars, sinuses or skin changes over the joint. Now could you get back onto the couch? Make sure that the patient and you are as comfortable as possible during any examination. Adjust the height of the couch if necessary. I'm going to lie you flat. The hip joint itself is not directly palpable. Rest your head back. Just going to feel over your hips. Let me know if it's sore. The greater trochanter may be tender in trochanteric bursitis. Although not shown here, the lesser trochanter and ischial tuberosity can also be palpated. Hip movements are tested passively. Take care to isolate the joint being tested. When testing flexion, the left hand is placed against the sacrum to detect any flexion at the lumbar spine. And the same with the other side? Lumbar spine flexion can contribute to apparent hip flexion, masking limitation. Normal range of flexion is from the neutral position here to 120 degrees. Now I'm just going to bring your leg out to the side. Let me know if it's sore. Again, use your left hand on the opposite iliac crest to stabilise the pelvis and isolate hip movements when testing abduction and adduction. And we'll repeat the test on the other side. Abduct the extended leg until you feel the pelvis start to tilt. The normal range is 45 degrees. Test adduction by moving the extended lower limb medially over the other one. The normal range is 25 degrees. Just relax your leg. Test rotation of the hip first with the leg in extension. Roll the leg on the couch using the foot to indicate the range of rotation. And relax. The normal range is 45 degrees in each direction. Painful or restricted rotation movements are common in osteoarthritis of the hip. Just going to bring the leg up again. Rotation is also tested with the hip in 90 degrees of flexion. Again, let me know if it's sore. In this position, the leg indicates the range of rotation, but can sometimes be confusing. This manoeuvre shows internal rotation. And the same with this leg. Flex it up. Watch the patient's face for discomfort. External rotation and internal rotation. In flexion, the normal range is also 45 degrees in each direction. Could you roll over onto your front? To test hip extension, we need some room posteriorly. Make sure that the couch is flat. Again, the left hand palpates the sacrum to detect movements out with the hip. Just going to lift your leg up again. Gently lift each leg in turn to assess the range of extension. And the same with this leg. The normal range is from neutral to 20 degrees of extension. Now roll back over. Now we show the special tests, starting with the Thomas test for fixed flexion deformity or limited extension. And again, can I put my arm... Flex both hips up as far as possible and feel that the lumbar lordosis is eliminated. From this position, we're testing the left hip. Now straighten your left leg and put it flat down onto the couch. Keep the non-test hip and the lumbar spine flexed while the patient extends the other limb. And we'll do the same on the other side. Let me pop my hand under your back and bring your legs up. Inability to get the test leg flat onto the bed indicates a flexion deformity. And bring your right leg down, flat onto the couch. Remember that extremes of hip movement may risk dislocation of a total hip replacement. The next special test is to examine for limb shortening. If you just lift your vest up for me and pull your shorts down a touch. 
the patient should have the legs stretched out as far as possible and in equivalent positions to eliminate any soft tissue contracture or abnormal posture. Let's just straighten you. That's it. Measure with the tape from the umbilicus to the medial malleolus. This is the apparent length and will include any lumbar spine deformity or angulation of the pelvis. Record and compare both sides. Measure the true leg length from the anterior superior iliac spine to the medial malleolus. There are many causes of true shortening of the leg listed in the book. If you detect any discrepancy in leg length, follow up with block testing. This is described in the book. The final test is Trendelenburg's sign for normal hip abduction function in weight bearing. Can you just stand up for me, Omar? Standing on one leg, the opposite iliac crest normally rises because of abduction of the weight-bearing hip by the gluteal muscles. Now, I'm going to ask you to stand on one leg. If you feel like you're going to lose your balance, use my arms as support, OK? Stand on your right leg. Carefully watch or palpate the iliac crests to see if they move up or down. It may be necessary to hold the posture for 30 seconds to demonstrate early gluteal fatiguing and there are many other causes of a positive Trendelenburg sign.